The Bucket Rider Coal all used up, the bucket empty, the shovel useless, the stove breathing cold, the room blown full of frost. Outside the window, trees rigid with rime, the sky a silver shield against anyone who wants help from it. I must have coal. I can't freeze to death. Behind me the hard-hearted stove, before me the hard-hearted sky. So I must ride a sharp path right in between and seek help in the middle from the coal merchant. But he has stopped caring about my usual pleas. I must give him exact proof that I don't have a single speck of coal dust left and that to me he is like the very sun in the sky. I must come like a starving beggar with a death rattle, planning to perish at his doorstep, which makes the master's cook decide to give me the last coffee grounds, just as the merchant must hurl a shovel full of coal into my bucket, feeling furious, but keeping to the commandment, Thou shalt not kill. The way I arrive has to decide the matter, so I ride there on a bucket. As a bucket rider, my hand on the handle, the simplest kind of bridle, I make my weary way down the stairs, but at the bottom my bucket rises up. Splendidly, splendidly. Camels kneeling low on the ground, then shaking themselves under their driver's sticks don't rise more beautifully. We move along the frozen, solid streets at an even canter, Often I'm lifted up to the height of the house's second stories. Never do I sink down to the level of their front doors. And I hover way up high in front of the merchant's vaulted cellar, where he crouches way down at his little table and writes, to let out all the extra heat. He's opened the door. Coal merchant! I call out in a voice burned hollow by the cold and cloaked in smoky clouds of breath. Please, coal merchant, give me a bit of coal. My bucket is so empty that I can ride on it. Be so kind. I'll pay you when I can. The merchant puts his hand to his ear. Have I heard right? He asks over his shoulder to his wife, who is knitting on the bench in front of the fire. Have I heard right? A customer. I don't hear a thing says his wife calmly, breathing in and out over her knitting needles, her back pleasantly warmed by the heat. Oh yes, I called out. It's me, an old customer, faithful and true, just without money at the moment. Wife, the merchant says, there is, there is someone. I can't be that far off. It must be an old very old customer to be speaking so straight to my heart. What's wrong with you, husband? The woman says, stopping her work for a moment and pressing her knitting to her chest. It's no one. Street is empty. All our customers have what they need. We could shut up shop for a few days and take a rest. But I'm sitting here on the bucket, I call out my eyes covered in numb tears from the cold. Please, just have a look up here. You'll see me right away. I'm asking for a shovelful. If you give me two, you'll make me overjoyed. All the other customers have what they need. Ah, if only I could hear the coal rattling in my bucket already. I'm coming, the merchant says, ready to climb up the cellar stairs on his stubby legs but his wife is already next to him, clinging to his arm and saying, You stay. If you don't stop being so stubborn, I'll go up. Remember all that coughing you had last night? But for a bit of business, even an imaginary one, you'll forget your wife and child and ruin your lungs. I'll go. Make sure to tell him all the kinds we have in stock. I'll call out the prices to you. Fine, the wife says, and climbs up to the street. Of course, she sees me right away. Mrs. Coal Merchant, I shout, my humble greetings. Just one shovel full of coal, right here into my bucket. I'll take it home myself. One shovel full 
of your very worst. Of course, I'll pay for it in full, but not now. Not now. How those two words, not now, ring out, and how wondrously they mingle with the evening bells chiming from the nearby church steeple. What does he want, then? the merchant calls out. Nothing, his wife calls back. There is nothing, I see nothing, I hear nothing. Just that it's striking six and we're closing up. The cold is dreadful. Tomorrow we're likely to have a lot of work. She sees nothing, hears nothing. But even so, she unties her apron strings and uses her apron to shoo me away. Unfortunately, it works. My bucket has all the advantages of a good mount, but it has no powers of resistance. It is too light. A woman's apron is all it takes to sweep it off its feet. You evil woman, I shout back, while she, turning toward the shop, half sneering, half smug, strikes her hand in the air. You evil woman, I asked for a shovelful of your very worst coal, and you did not give it to me. And with that, I rise into the regions of the ice mountains and disappear, never to be seen again. Thank you.